All right, an interesting, sorry to be so abrupt, we gotta keep us moving to uh, keep the, our finish time close. Uh, our second speaker is Don Sweet, uh, who when I asked to give a good bio said, hey, here's Don from Sustainable Intelligence. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, I wanted to be adaptive, so I don't know where people were in the end, so it was gonna be relevant. <laughs> That's right. Uh, first of all, how many people were at the earlier session where Jan presented Rochester Roots? A show of hands? Okay, so, you were, you didn't raise your hand. Let me see, so did you. Okay, so um, I'm gonna kind of skip over a lot of what Rochester Roots does and go, go a little bit to the next level. Um, basically, what I had was a long corporate career, um, you know, both in Fortune 500 companies and building companies. I was an entrepreneur, I did it domestically and internationally. Seven years ago, I decided that I was going to give back, and I was going to do that by supporting people who were making a difference. Uh, too many corporate people went and used their energy and had a lot of unintended consequences. So I figured that was a way to kind of make it safer. Uh, okay. So the Roots program was one of the folks. Uh, what so is, uh, Tom Singer is doing is another one. And um, the, the pre K through six sustainability education is project based. We're using model based inquiry. Um, Montessori, uh, one day per one period per week, and a two uh, after school uh, periods per week. Um, my particular interest in this was to teach sustainability. Uh, my goal was a twofold. Uh, Number one, I don't see a divergence between experiential education and academic education. I think they actually enrich each. Uh, I would just like to get back to the balance of using academics to learn from nature in addition to trying to control nature. Uh, and I mean, uh, we've got to get it down to a third grade level of understanding. I did work for the military, and that was the level of manuals that you had to do to, when you produced a product for that. Seem reasonable to me. We live, Rochester is the uh, fifth poorest uh, city in the nation. And in some areas, the adult illiteracy rate is 57%. Um, so, uh, but the other thing I thought was interesting with the third graders is I'm an advisor for the business school. And the long term is I want to start a program there where we take an executive, partner them with a third grader and go through one semester. I'll, I'll start with four weeks of quick background, uh, but then the next six weeks, the, the, the third grader and the executive teach each other all the fundamental principles, concepts, and vocabulary of sustainability. And there's no reason why it can't be done. It, it's more our ability to simplify it. Um, both uh, Alan, or, or I'll start with Paul, talked about the complexity of the students are working, are coming into to try to understand what they've got to do. Alan was talking about the difficulty in how would the phrenesis, I'm not too, too up on that, but I understand what the problem you were explaining, how hard it is to teach this. We're trying to deal it from an experiential point of view. We are now located within a co-work entrepreneurial center, and we're at 650,000 square feet that are open, and the intention is that, that the students in this program uh, will start building their own businesses in third and sixth grade, and by high school, they will have, by the time they graduate from high school, they will have a working business that can support them. I know this is possible, we see what they're doing. Myself, I had four businesses before I graduated from high school. Um, the, and what we're seeing the kids, they're a heck of a lot more smart, <laughs> they're smarter. <laughs> um, so, we're reducing the wicked problems of living systems, and uh, it's easy. We can take a first grader and they can experience uh, a plant that's wilted. If you water that plant, it stands up. That's now a social system that brought the water, a technical system that held the water in the ecosystem. If they overwater it, they get to see that it flops back down, so they see the unintended consequences of well intentioned action. Uh, we're now teaching in a, a Montessori school, system thinkers. The comment to the uh, teacher was, oh, we can do that really easily. It's been amazing teaching in an area now where we teach in several schools, but 
they really get it. They say, well, when the kids go away on um, a, a, a vacation, they come back, the plants are wilted. Now we know how to turn that into a lesson. And, that, and the, it, so this course has been enlightening both for the teachers as well as the students. And we just step back and have, stand back and have fun. Um, but they're also learning metaphors for their own life uh, in terms of how you create your own resilience. Um, the critical thinking for sustainability, there's some discipline to it. The entrepreneurial businesses have two dimensions, uh, the current well-being and then the trajectory of well-becoming. So the goals for the students, the goals for society is to make these concepts uh, accessible to third grade level. And the second thing is mathematically framed. When I started this, I said, if you can't frame it mathematically, you, you really don't have anything. Uh, now, oh, wait, could you tell me we got six minutes left? Because oh. um, I've got a video to kind of so you can get an experience of the kids a little bit in this. Uh, Jen went through earlier the kind of system we're talking. This was came out of the Cornell. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Came out of the Cornell um, course we did with them. The idea that there are 10 trillion living organisms uh, to support one vertebrate, and if they only have two degrees of freedom, that's 10 trillion factorial, gives across the point that the idea that you're going to do reductionist science is, is, has certain boundaries. Um, it doesn't say that you don't try to do it, because you have to in order to try to understand pieces. But we try to impress on the kids how complex things are. And we take them through a sustainability framework. Uh, we don't have time for all that, but the, but the step one is model-based inquiry. Um, and it's experience only. And we, the, uh, you, if you, when you ask a kid, what's your experience of what would be needed to create well-being in the community, they're coming from themselves. If you want to list stories and tacit knowledge, it's a great way to do it. That came up in the session yesterday. It's, the process is not culturally aware because the child versus culturally, you know, uh, uh, unaware. Very making a distinction there. When a child is creating their own uh, learning context, there is no such thing as culture. It's just them. Uh, and that's what we're supporting. Um, the, uh, it creates a shared awareness, though, in terms of when you do the model, it may get a shared language, uh, it becomes a translation into meaning, and then that becomes transformative in terms of common interest. And that's what we're seeing happen with kids. We've wanted to replicate this in games. The issue with games is, though, that you need an arbitrator. All games have a win-lose uh, scenario, a right-wing answer. Sustainability isn't. It's a, you know, it's a better or worse answer. How do you put that in a game? Well, uh, I'm thankful for this conference, because Bill and Janelle uh, gave me an idea on that, and I think we can build off of what they talked about. Model-based inquiry creates models as boundary objects. So if we were to do multi-game, uh, multi interconnected games, we could probably get there. And that's the idea that uh, Bill spoke about earlier. Uh, we're, we're taking the kids through understanding the influences, the patterns, and, oh, I'll get away from that, I'm sorry. Understanding patterns and the paradigms. And we don't go to the level of interactional expertise that Paul used in terms of when he talked about the paradigm. But the kids get it. Um, then they choose their perspective and their boundaries uh, and uh, their scenarios. So that uh, Danella mentioned, the book he mentioned, she talks to the fact that you, uh, don't, I don't know, I guess, I'm sorry. But anyway, the, um, the, without a scenario, you can't uh, discuss or, uh, the complexity. You have to bring it into a scenario. So the kids do this in form of their businesses. Um, Jim talked about the community uh, uh, model we did, the 700 participants, uh, and the seven outcomes we, gave, we had, and the uh, modeling the Rochester Roots program, and the four categories that we found for age. Very interesting, when we talked to kids, we interviewed 170 of them, we just asked them random questions, you know, just asked the question, what does this program mean to you? One said it's good, it means world peace. World peace? Yes. Because if you aren't, if people aren't so hungry, they won't be so angry. 
the uh, we're in the, the highest poverty area in Rochester. But the other thing that's interesting is that when we sit down and a kid does a model, we have I've not seen one kid that isn't capable of being a deep thinker. So I went back and said, what the heck is happening? What happens is the models are experiential. Well, a child has 10 years of experience by the time, say, they're doing this. They know their experience better than anybody else. Of course they're a deep thinker. We're just giving them a context to turn the tables in the sense that the teacher is, is, has to now engage with where, where is, go beyond theory of mind to theory of brain. How is the child's brain learning and the neuroscience of that? And we do quite a bit in terms of trying to support Jane and understanding what goes on. It's a great, great lady, Vanessa Rodriguez out of Harvard Ed, that's given us a lot of help in the teaching brain and what goes on in the teacher. So the teacher is part, all this is teamwork. So that you get the teacher, you get the roots person, you got outside folks, you got other, other people that are working in that. We also are addressing cognition with the critical thinking. Um, a recent study came out of, of uh, well, actually it was multi-universities, but that people were getting better grades on tests, but they weren't improving their cognition. This program is focused on cognition. And the Gabrelli uh, cognitive neuroscience labs at MIT has been helpful in trying to help us understand that. Um, so that's it. This is one of the, uh, you know, the sensor pad, uh, we'll see the kid later, start out uh, thinking about what the relationships, because these are causal, because they're causal, they can change it into a functional math statement, no problems. I stood up in front of, in front of a group of third graders, and in 15 minutes, a good percentage of the class understood. When, when I asked them, what makes a plant healthy? Well, it's well-being. Oh, sun, you know, we grew a simple one. Sun, soil, water, and fire. Um, I said, well, so you can write that as F, opening parenthesis, sun, close parenthesis, water, comma. Each one of your causal relationships, you now have a legitimate functional math statement. They can't solve that, but that's not important. Now they're learning how to frame what they're doing in a disciplined way at their grade level. Um, okay, so I wanted to, we're now doing that with system dynamics model. And uh, I'm sure we'll be able to do it pretty easy. They get the modeling. And especially that Logos model is great for that. But uh, the predator prey one thing a whole bunch of them. But what we realize is this is a vector. Well, there's no reason that, that the kids can't talk about the projections of the vector, of, of the pathways of well being they're going to create as vector statements. Again, they can't solve it, but it doesn't make any difference if they can. So I want to go to this. This one. I got it. Okay, good. <laughs> they blow it up to the. This was at the Engineers for Sustainable World Conference. Um, and go to minute four, please. Okay? <laughs> this, this is a third grader. Uh, three weeks ago, the Engineers for Sustainable World had their annual. We have liked everything we are designing with our community patterns. In our Billion Science for Life after school program, JJ designed a composting robot. His project has been chosen by our team to, to go into the fall sem semester science design team project. I have only I have only been in this country for five years, my family and I came to the United States from the my my community is very important to me because they help me overcome challenges. Now my challenge is to tell us how we can help improve our community and our businesses. We have a potential echo district in Northern Rochester, which is the fifth poorest city in the nation. The echo district includes the Monster Academy, the largest public market and severe poor neighborhoods where the city is taking down lots of houses, houses and leaving lots of unused lands. Here's a map drawn by landscape architect Mr. Robinson. The Montessori Academy is in the middle. Within the Echo Districts, we imagine houses with energy, 
It's a short heat pumps, solar energy, a high tunnel, warm water collection, and and urban gardens. Here's the sustainable sustainable house drawn by architect Mr. Mosin. My friends and I want to integrate our businesses with the Echo District to help low-income families and the community will become well. Here's a picture of how we would do that. We need your info on how to improve our community well-being. Please tell us how what how what the engineering will impact sociological, ecological, and technological systems to improve our community. Since those systems co-create and co-involve, please tell us how they will impact each other. Next, we want to tell our we, we want you to tell us how to, it will impact seven well-being outcomes. Education, e ecosystem, employment, financial, health, public safety, and sense of communicate, community. Here's a system dynamics we modeled, we, we created with Navid Naja from Arizona State University that you could, can, you can use as a reference. Finally, we want you to think about your engineering solutions over the course of five or more years. What will the impact of your system be over year one, year three, year five, year ten, and year fifteen? Here's a worksheet you can use. Please use a functional success statement like we do. Here's an example on the slide. We do not yet know how to solve the equation, but it, com but it communicates clearly what the system influences are. There are copies of this available for your teams. You could present your responses to drawing objects or script. skits. Be creative. Judges were made up of one third ESW stuff on, on third professionals, professionals and one third Community, community members. The judges will vote it to each table to answer any questions in your view. Please tell us how you would you deploy new sensors or a new app. To what new services could one of the businesses offer to make nearby households? What new businesses might be offered? How can you tell help the community? I look forward to answering your questions and judging your responses during your presentations at lunch. Next week, I will view your responses with my friends and Mrs. Green back at the Montreal Academy. Thank you. So, so um, how much time are you? Please. What's that? Okay, that's fine. So, uh, <clears throat> when that kid graduates, he's going to be looking for a different thing when he comes to college. And it should be exciting for everybody. Uh, I know there's a, a say we don't, we, we don't engage in the debate between experience and education. But what that child is going to be doing is when you're doing LCAs, it's not going to be a truncated LCA with narrow boundaries. It's going to be, how can you help me understand the holistic impact? Uh, so we don't get into things like ethanol, where the expectations are much different than the results. Um, the other thing, and I'll talk to you quickly about this. I've been sitting back watching what's going on and asking you, what is it that's really happening? And we don't seem to have a problem to teach across domains with these kids. And it's because sustainability education fits into the category of generative knowledge. It's knowledge that leads to other knowledge just by knowing it. Um, we teach it as a domain-specific knowledge. We don't believe in generalizable uh, uh, knowledge in the sense that you just need the discipline. But inherently, they're, they're cross-disciplinary. They cross domain, 
And the vocabulary that's in those um, is uh, uh, a paradigm you can use in a math class, you can use it in an English class, you can use it in a science class. It doesn't make a pattern the same way. Uh, and it's really difficult to teach uh, types of uh, vocabulary. Uh, the, the, the kinds of like temporal, like compare, those type of evolve. This is a perfect environment to do it, and, this, and these Montessori teachers realized that. Um, you can get back to my presentation. We have two more 20 minute presentations yeah, and 35 minutes to do them. So, okay. please. Yeah, sure. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs>